you are going to wonder why. But you need not wonder long, for the simple truth of this tragedy is as clear to see as the sun shining up at dawn. It is so simple that even the small children dying from transfused blood in the Midwest can understand it well. Let them die. That was the decision in Washington and Atlanta. Those are the words that are whispered in the cloakrooms of Congress, the words emblazoned over the silence of the White House. Let them die. I live in San Francisco and I can't cry anymore. Now it's your turn to cry, America. Now it's your turn to pace the hospital corridors. Now it's your turn to wait up all night. Now it's your turn to wonder. Why? Why? And though I cannot cry, my heart grieves for you, for your mothers and fathers, your lovers, your husbands, wives, and children. For now, you will know what we have known for long and bitter years, and you are going to wonder. Why? Why? So many words. Well, I am hurting now, and this is the only way that I know how to feel better. Words and words, and tomorrow's still coming, and I'm driving myself crazy, because I want it to come, and I don't want it to come. I want no more pain. I don't think I can stand any more pain. So much death, I can't stop it, not with words. Somebody do something. I remember and it hurts. I can't stay here, I have to go away. Some place where I won't remember, I cannot remember. No, I turn every corner here, there. In the distance, in the distance. There, Marvin, my God, Marvin, it's me. Come back, it's me, please. Come back. Look at all these names. All of them up there like a quilt. If I could, I'd love the houses for ten blocks around and have a field with a thousand corpses rotting in the sun. Brad, put the thirteen letters of your name on the wall there, Marvin. And this is just the beginning, I promise. People will listen. I may wear myself out at first, but they will listen. His name was important. That had to come first. I laid out the letters of his name, and this I hadn't planned on and wasn't ready for. I began to remember. The silly names we had for each other, our fights, his cat, trying to make him laugh. Memories accelerating, making me laugh, the first in a long time. And then I felt him, his presence. I don't know how to explain it. I brushed my face with the back of my hand and it was wet with tears. He was here. Welcome back, Marvin. You made this for Marvin? Yes, this is it, Kevin. What do you think? I'm great, Quinn. Really, it's... A banner for revolution. <laughs> well, a revolution of Macy's, perhaps. It's beautiful. It sucks. Don't you see? That's the point. Well, it, it really is lovely, in a way. I know it's not exactly artistic, but it's the best I could do. If Marvin were alive, decided this could kill him. Just canvas? <clears throat> Simple. Three feet by six feet and paint I found in the basement. We make one for every person who's been killed by AIDS. Put them all together somehow. Right. Other people can make them for people they know. Whatever. I don't know. We get them, we put them together, we take them to Washington, and we cover the Capitol building. Cover the Capitol? Well. You know, maybe we could put it on the ground, on the mall. Better. Jesus, can you see it, Kevin? No screaming, no protest, nothing. But this huge fucking banner. Hundreds of panels like these. Thousands. All right, sewn together like a quilt. Exactly. Is this a great idea or what? Why three foot by six foot? The, the panels, I mean, why that size? Because that's just about the size of a dead body. I see this so perfectly in my mind that I have no idea how to do it. Will you help? Don't you think that's a little bit morbid? Don't you think people will just turn and run in the other direction? I mean, you're talking about a portable cemetery, for Christ's sakes. Gives me goosebumps in all the wrong places. And people need something right now. There's so many names, they just can't disappear. Oh, Merrick, please, stop with the Susan B. Anthony act. A gay monument. Well, the whole world is a gay Hey, look, I never said that. Yeah, the YAP monument. doesn't make it so. Oh, no, sir. When? It's people like you who are letting us die. Justin, you people are like nothing I've ever seen. A lot of work. It'll never work. It isn't practical. This works. No. Something like that would cost too much.
much money. Look, it's not like we have a whole lot of other choices. It's either this or we just lay down and die. I, for one, do not mess around with the creative process. God forbid. But there's too much going on with this whole AIDS thing. And you want to start an art project? Oh, God. Yes, let's figure this out. This has got to happen. I just don't know how. Most of us are so scared we've lost our voices. This can speak for us. Fred Ginsburg. Amador Gonzalez. Raymond Tasco. Richard Hawk. Daniel Tarango. Pete Peterson. Jack Castor. Anthony Ramirez. David Lynch. Cody Williams. Ignacio Suazo. Dr. Thomas Suado. Baird Underhill. Amy Sly. Joey Garcia. Sylvester. Caesar Oscar. Bobby Campbell. History will record that in the last quarter of the 20th century, a new and deadly virus emerged, and that the one nation on earth with the resources knowledge and institutions to respond to this new epidemic failed to do so. Enjoy the sun. Bill was always the practical 
one. Not bad looking either. Well, Tim was a dreamer, you know? The artistic temperament, as grandmother used to call it. Their house always had many flowers and plants in it, and on special occasions, they presented each other with great <coughs> gladioli. One more trust, and then let's see. I'm star. Also on birthdays and anniversaries, they had special restaurants where they would celebrate another year together. Tim owned an old convertible, which they had named, oh, what was it? Miss Park Lane. Oh, yes, Miss Park Lane. Can you imagine? And to be the old girl. I wasn't supposed to know this, but they had a name for me, too. They called me the old girl. And Mahalia Jackson. Holy, holy, holy. Singer. Right out of your past 
in the near future? Well, there are moments like this. It's an extraordinary, but not a very comfortable feeling. Well, that's what it was like. There I am still wondering about things like what should go on my resume and the project comes along. Well, I felt there should be some sign, you know, some indication to let me know without a doubt that I was making the right choice. Well, there just, there just wasn't. I guess, I, I guess I'm the kind of person who needs to see the path, you know, cut clearly in front of them. Well then, and I don't realize how this happened, but I realized the reason that I was scared was that I was looking for a sign of the future. I'm looking and it's empty. No sign, no path, nothing. And then it occurs to me that the future is supposed to be empty until you put something there. Anyway, I, I loved it. My big idea. Yes, well, it was incredible, and I wanted to help. I thought, well, uh, this is perfect for you. All right. Come on, it is. Sure, no problem. Look, actually, he was the epitome of just about everything I had set my life against. I mean, he looked like the product of the rich, privileged class. I mean, look at him. That shirt, those shoes. He looks like he should be drinking a martini. I didn't have any illusions. This wasn't exactly life as I had pictured it. But I must admit, it was tempting. I guess I was expecting to meet some sort of gun-carrying urban gorilla from the stories I had heard. He was, uh, well, energetic is a good word, and articulate, and charismatic, and uh, a bit boyish, I suppose, and... Uh, Cute. Oh, God, no. <coughs> pushy. 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 Yes, definitely pushy. He would argue this. Many things have been said, but pushy? Well, that's a compliment. Okay, then. Arrogant. No. Would you let me finish? I had never met anyone with such a creative drive. Well, I thought he was cute. Please stop. Sorry. Here I am figuring this person is going to give us our focus. I must have been out of my mind. It's been a week since we've talked. What do you think? I don't know. What <laughs> about this place, huh? It looks really small to me, Quinn. What do you mean? I think it's perfect, and we have to take what we can get. Relax already. This place isn't ours. We're just borrowing. Oh. Whoa. God, I feel like I'm in a road hard and put up wet. Oh, hi, who are you? Kevin, meet Gert, our uh, professional volunteer. I am Gert. I'm a godsend. <coughs> well, Quinn, how are things in the world of constant surveillance? Things are fine. I know what you're thinking. No, she's not gay, she's not a drag queen, and that's really how she dresses. Hey, I always wanted to be a lesbian. It's just not lucky enough, I guess. I wasn't thinking, I mean... <laughs> Thanks a lot. Don't mention it. Look, I really think we're going to need a bigger place. I don't think we can build all the panels we need here. Well, and we're going to need money and more people. Just as long as I don't have to answer phones or show up for board meetings. Okay, well, and we're going to need some way to keep track of all of this. Well, we need a bookkeeper. Not yet, but we will. Payroll? Maybe. Oh, no, not payroll. I just hear the word and I get hives. <laughs> well, Quinn, <laughs> I know, I know. You're the one that's supposed to know all about this stuff. I'll shut up. But let me ask you something first. This is possible, isn't it? There's absolutely no way to do what you've got planned. It's the craziest thing I've heard of in my life. And? Okay. Okay, okay. If I ask you something, would you tell me the truth? Sure. Is your bed made? <laughs> my bed? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Is your checkbook balanced? Oh, it's... Uh-huh. I thought so. Well, 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 attack of the left brain fairies. <laughs> well, I don't know whether to say thank you or fuck you. Ooh, say them both and keep me guessing. Ooh, he's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, about this quilt, the way I figured it's within a year, a year and a half, we can raise the money we need and get our No, wait! Money. I thought you understood. We're taking this quilt to Washington, a display on the Capitol Mall with 2,000 panels made by people all over the country. October this year. Quinn, th that's less than six months. Yes, exactly. 17 weeks and four days. Oh my God, do you have any idea? I had the idea. Making it happen will be your job. As long as you're just standing there, you mind giving me a hand? If I asked you something, would you tell me the truth? Oh, I'll certainly give it a try. Is he crazy? <laughs> 
a little. He moves kind of fast, doesn't he? Yeah, just not all in the same direction. I kind of like it, though. It's, it's really different. When I first met him, I said to myself, this must be some good shit. <laughs> you get used to him. You've been around here for a while? Let's see. Uh, ever since Macy's, about two months ago, I worked at the cosmetic counter. I think it was an exercise in negative marketing. People would stand there right in front of me and say, thank you, sir. <laughs> You're not serious. Why would I lie about something like that? <laughs> I never do stuff like this. I mean, volunteering, I mean, I've never done it before, but now, you know, I'm turning into the kind of person I always used to hate. It's only a matter of time when I'm out on the street with my little tin can saving the planet. God. <laughs> did you just sort of show up here, or did Quinn actually go out looking for you? Well, then, you know what they say. You put out the garbage, but you cannot put out the trash. very best friend. I had been thinking about going to visit him when a letter came from his roommate. He's very sick, Michael. We need your help. Yes, tell Frankie I'll be there as soon as I can. I didn't think about it for a second. Frankie needed me and I was there. That's the kind of person I am. You rest now, baby. We'll be right here. I'm taking care of everything. It's been three weeks, Michael, and you haven't left the house. You need to rest. Do something else for a while. I'm fine. I'm fine, Bradley. See, you just don't know me that well. This is how I get. Do you have any soup? Soup, yes. Good, you need to eat. For Frankie, when he wakes up. Michael, please <coughs> rest. Go lie down for a while. I'll make soup. It'll be okay. You rest, okay? Please? I'll try. But let me know the minute he wakes up, though. Bradley? Okay. I remember I was trying to rest at the time, but I could only think of the next meal, the next medication, of what I might have forgotten. And then it happened. The shock was the suddenness. Mikey? Help me, he's going! Help him! I ran to where he was. He had tried to get up on his own. He fell, I heard it, I knew. Frankie, no, cut, damn it, no, cover, get the cover, quick! Mikey, call 911! No, no, I'll call, I'll call. Call, 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 give me the cover, come on! He went so quick, like that, like that. Right on the bathroom floor, boom. Not like this, god damn it, not like this, not no. now. We think he's, we think he's, Frankie? I shouldn't have given you that. 
that soup. I'm going to take care of you. I'm so sorry. The next few moments are unspeakably horrible. Not because he's gone, but because I am too. For weeks my life had been only for him, and suddenly like that, I don't exist anymore. I'm nowhere to be found. There is something that you can do for me now, his friend. Bradley. Yes, Bradley. Is he upstairs? Yeah, I think so, huh? You go up and stay with me for a while, okay? I think he might need you right now. When you come down, I'll be gone. No. I want to help you carry No, him. you go upstairs. I need to do this alone. But will you remember to do something for me, Michael? Will you remember to tell his mother that I'm sorry? Will you remember to do that for me, Michael? Yes. Did you know Frankie? We saw each other and say hello. I never knew his name. Remember to tell her that I'm sorry. I will. What do I do now? I don't have anything to do. Now you have to take care of yourself. Two days later, I left for home. I thought, uh, 
This is what it's like to go crazy. There's nothing I wanted to do. I thought, fuck it, huh? Nothing matters. What difference does it make? I was in real trouble. See, I was afraid of hurting so much because I knew nobody else in the world would feel it the way that I would. And that it would probably kill me. Then I heard about the panels. I made this one. I'm starting to come back. Well, look at this. It's gorgeous. OK, how many does this make? 38, counting this one. Oh, oh now don't you start, Missy. There's bound to be more coming in soon. Only 1,962 to go. What comes up for me is I feel so outnumbered around here. Sometimes I feel you know, different because I'm straight. It's a strange feeling. Very awkward. Different because I'm straight? There's a new twist. Imagine living your whole life like that. <laughs> oh, what's crazy is that I find myself feeling guilty because I feel this way, like an outsider. But I'm not, you know, and this is pretty unusual work for anyone. Mother of God, I know I put those scissors around here somewhere. Where are those girls? Almost anyone. I would never have ended up here if I hadn't come in to get change for my parking meter. The honest truth. Swear to God. We got her. I was a teenage sewing zombie. Well, actually, I guess I did get involved because there is someone in my life that's very important to me. We used to be, well, I used to, we dated back when we were in college. The class couple, you might say, Al and Barbara. After Al came out and I got over the initial shock, we worked it out. We remained best friends. And then he got sick? No, but some of his best friends have died, and I saw what he went through. I needed to help. The tortures of unrequited love. Will you hush? Don't worry, you'll get no understanding out of her. But I know. The heart wants what it wants. Oh, Lord. Look, can we change the subject? It's not one of my better topics. There's something I've always wanted to ask. Didn't you know about him then? His, how you say, personal preferences? Stop, you! Heartless reptile, I swear to Christ. I saw what I wanted to see. Ain't that the truth? He'd excuse himself early from a date, saying he had to get home and study. I'd see him the next day, he looked dragged out like he'd been up all night. I thought to myself, wow, this guy can really study. <laughs> I never figured it out. Look, no more about this, okay? I hate this. Sometimes I think relationships were invented for people who aren't crazy enough on their own. Amen, sister. <laughs> Another one? 
For whom? No one we know. You were the wish my heart made. His lover wrote that. Why do you do this to yourself? You know I worry about you. You know, don't start. It's late. We already talked about it. I worry, okay? What's happening to us? Nothing's happening to us. You're very important to me, and so is this. Well, I don't want to push you or anything, but I just can't get into it like you. You ask me, it's too much what you're doing around gay people all day long, wearing yourself out. Why so much, honey? You act like you're guilty about something. Leo, please. I wish back I, off. I wish I felt different, but I don't. Why don't you just go back to bed? I wish I could sleep. Why don't you take a pill or something? How many more of those are you going to make? A hundred, a thousand, as many as it takes. How do you expect me to take all of I this? don't expect you to take anything. I expect you to do something about it. Hey, don't lay that on me. I care, but not enough to stop living my life. I didn't know these people. Millions of people have died from cancer. I don't see so many panels. Give them some money, a few hours handing out flyers, but please, don't give them our life. Look, why don't you just leave me alone? Hey, you know what? You've got it. on any piece of fabric we could get our hands on. And it wasn't much. But the local merchants, God bless them, they were a life's blood at this point. Everyone donated whatever they could. We practically lived on pizza from the little shop across the street. They just kept sending it over. My God, I must have gained 10 pounds. Then, slowly, wonderfully, the panels from other places began to arrive. A few at first, but it was something. And we would sit together and sew them late into the night. We would tell each other stories and laugh. Sometimes the only sound you would hear was the hum of the sewing machine. I had to work with the panels face down, you know, so the name wouldn't show. Because oh, it could just get to be too much. <laughs> what with the electric machines and all, I would cry so much, I thought I'd be electrocuted. But late at night, sometimes we would sit and work. And the only sound you would hear was the hush and the rhythm of the machines. Well, you could sort of hear the panel speak to you, you know? There's nothing so boring than someone preaching to you from beyond the grave. So I won't. But I just have one question, so bear with me. How come nobody ever paid this much attention to me when I was alive? Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the fuss, it's nice. I was just wondering. I mean, I was so scared all the time, I was gonna get it. For a while, it was kinda like watching one of those old horror movies, where the monster's chasing the pretty girl, you know what I'm saying? He's chasing her and she gets away. He chases her, she gets away again. He keeps chasing her, and this time it's a little piece of her dress, and all the wobbly and blood pressure's going up. I mean, Christ, probably he's been killed the girl already. I don't know how long I can take this. So I got it. But well, well, shit happens. At least it's over. I have a question, too. Where's my halo already? Did I miss something? Wasn't something supposed to happen?
the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> I'm not gonna die. No way I'm gonna die. Lots of stuff I haven't done yet. No way I'm gonna die. Oh, you'll see. I just have some kind of lung cancer. That's all it is. Sounds awful, but I read somewhere where they can handle that. They can. I read that. So. No, I'm not gonna die. I'm not. Let it be known. I will anesthetize myself. I will get myself 70s drunk and not apologize a bit for it because you don't know what I've been through. Oh, you don't even know. Throw me out of my job. Drive me out of the place where I live. Well, let this be known. I will scream on this quilt. I will, I will, I will force you to look and make you turn away from what you see because this is me and I matter. I will take you and shake you by the roots of what you've always known. And there are lots more like me, God damn it. Let it be known. All of that noise, I'm sure. Why can you be swimming next to that one over there? They're the cute one, the one who's writing all the time. Oh, now don't look at him, you're gonna embarrass me. But to be sewing right here next to him, well, the colors clash. See, see, he's looking at me. He's looking right at me. I bet you he's writing about me. He wants it. What did I tell you? They all wanted it. Always did it. What can I say? Please, take me up from here and sew me over there next to him. I'll do anything. <coughs> the longing for the thing not to do more, the love not seen, drove me to the very edge of wonder. <coughs> Thank you. 
before you give up. I mean, I've got a hell of a lot better things to do with my time than just stand around not talking to anybody. Not that I go to those places. What I remember most about walking into this place is seeing people try to sew the most remarkable thing on the fabric. I mean, the craziest thing. I'm telling you. <laughs> like the time this guy tried to sew a whole automobile tire onto a piece of canvas, a whole tire, my lord, I didn't even want to ask. That's when I just started giving some advice. Common sense is all it was. Job descriptions, what's that? Training manual? Give me a break, there was just so much to do. Wasn't anyone going to tell you what to do and what not to do. You just did what you thought might work when you kept on doing it, and it did. <laughs> But bunch of pigs, that's why I said bunch of holy mother pigs. I am gonna have to clean this place up, which I will do just as soon as I get back from Betty Ford's. <laughs> They'll come and be a little suspicious for her. Mother pigs, most attractive name I've been called in months. Of course, that was before my social life met its untimely end. Untimely end, nothing, honey. I believe it's called this project. Don't I know? I'm Last time a man crossed my threshold. This one I had the cable TV put in. <laughs> oh, the very same thing happened to me. Drove me wild. I must have stayed in there and polished every piece of furniture in that room four times so I could stay in one <laughs> It was the boots that got It happens every time. It was not. It was those little electric things they have hanging off their belt. I wanted to ask if I could try it on. Man. Understand. <laughs> Wear a belt, go to jail. Now, jail. Now, that's another story. There was this one time in Alcatraz. We all quit. <laughs> yes, please. Enough. Well. Give us our sins. I guess not everyone's used to the homosexual patois. <laughs> patois, hell. Right. But I'm afraid to even open my mouth around here. Don't you dare. Well, the woman's queen of sheep is gonna have, gonna have to get used to it. How can I not be used to it? Working around here. <laughs> Rusty! Christ, what? Someone on the phone needs help. Lord, don't we all. Honey, if death equals silence, you are very much alive. Hello. Yes, this is Rusty. Uh-huh. In Missoula? Really? Oh, God, no. In San Francisco? No, it's the middle of summer here, so of course it's freezing. Three feet by six feet after it's been hemmed. Now listen, honey, it's okay for you to make it just a wee bit bigger, and we'll hem it for you when it gets here. Just don't make it any smaller, okay? They get so hard to fit. How, How many times have I said that? <laughs> Seven six quilt. Will you That's please stop? Christ! What is that beeping sound? I keep hearing this beeping sound. Am I going nuts right here? Uh, that's just my beeper for my ACT. I have to take it every four hours. It's pretty important. I can't forget. Oh, honey, can I ask you something? How could you possibly forget something that important? Huh? Mr. Raldo, give it a rest. <coughs> Never mind, sweetie. Mother's a nosy bitch tonight. <laughs> Ignore him, honey. What do you think? It's pretty. What is it? <laughs> it's a wish list. Kevin wants us to put a list up in the window of things that can be donated. Fabric, any kind. Needles, pins, sewing machines, thread, any color. Hugs, back rubs, and money. <laughs> Those last three were my idea. I wanted to put big, burly construction workers. But I was voted down. Kevin said it gave the wrong impression. Impression now. I think it gives the perfect impression. <laughs> Which is why we keep you in the back. Away from the windows. How you doing? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Little victories, I suppose. We figured out that by putting grommets all the way around the 12 by 12, that when it came time to join the whole thing together, we could tie it together with these little plastic cable ties. It'll be like stitching. Here, let me show you. Aren't these adorable? And they come in white and purple.
The edges on the boundary of my life are disappearing, fading away like some sort of teasing fog, and I'm scared. I don't mind telling you. I've had some rough things to deal with in my life, and I managed. I quit drugs in 82. It wasn't easy. I'm handling my addictions now, but that's nothing compared to what's going on. I met my lover when I was 24 years old, and my life was like a dream. A wonderful fucking dream. We made plans, fixed up a house we bought together, settled into a life. Well, it was a lot more than I could have asked for. Nobody asked me if I would mind carrying him to the bathroom late at night. If I would mind feeding his dinner spoonful by spoonful. If I would mind rearranging my whole entire life to take care of him. Nobody asked me. This is my life that's being used up here. This is no small currency to me. I'm a gay man. Time is the only real wealth I have and I'm going broke fast. Nobody asked me. I'm not ready for this. I mean, I just want to get high so bad. I mean, I got sober for this. Slow down, slow down, you're going too fast. I'm not going, ugh! Oh, don't scream like that, I hate it when you do that. You remind me of Betty Davis and whatever happened to Baby James. <laughs> Myra, Send my brakes, you want me to roll out the front door? You want me to answer that? <laughs> you just did. You remembered your pills? Yeah, I want to take a couple. They might Please, down. stop this! Yeah, well, I figure as long as you won't let me out of this goddamn wheelchair. You know, I really don't Not until you feel better. You know what the doctor said? I feel better. Stay there, at least I'll have gone. You can do whatever you want. Just fuck it, okay? I said, okay. Here's my seat. Keep it. Who am I going to give it I'm to? putting it on the desk. Keep it, please. No! I might need your help later on. You might have to let yourself in. Yeah, of course, I wasn't thinking. You know, Chael... Yeah, yeah. Don't even start. You want to leave, so leave. Just make sure you take everything, okay? Don't ask me to understand, just don't ask me nothing right now. But I'm laughing, I might tell you. How do you Latins love your scene? What would West Side Story be without Anita? Yeah. Yee-ho! Oh, yeah, right. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Look, I think it would just fart. Yeah. Yeah. Like everybody else who lost a lover and peace themselves as well. No better. No worse than those of us who uh Janice gained ourselves to death. I too lost the love of my life. That one true shy person in my life when he didn't die. He just went away. And I don't know if there's something more than love. Those lazy mornings when last night the smoke hovered in the air over a close of house carol sometimes deeper in the bed. But something's come between me and my love. And that I'm not going to from anybody else's love. But my love's been taken away by something too tiny to see. Too weak to reproduce itself. And the final humiliation is that it lives inside me. The virus has done more to ruin my life. It's finally broken my heart. I just found this. It's so perfect. Get a load of this. Be not afraid of love, for it alone.
line, we can heal all sorrow. The holiest of all spots on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. Doesn't that just align your chakras? You know what I mean? It does for me. I know, I know. I'm just too, you know, open. That's my problem. So, where were we? Oh, yes. So, it's the 1st of August. Okay, and we've been working like crazy. I mean, round the clock stuff, and it's hot and everything. And still, we have only 300 panels. Not nearly enough to cap the Capitol Mall just two months later. We were a little pressured. I guess I would have given up. Oh, gosh, lots of times were it. If not for this unmistakable feeling that we were involved in something, well, you know, magical. There's no other way to put it. I can't really explain it, but when you see the quilt, you'll know. You know? Oh, I don't know. Quit. I have a reporter on the phone who wants to know how many panels we have. Do we have an accurate count? Don't give him a number. That won't do any good. Neil, how many do we have? Just under 300. Or is it 320? Well, I don't know. I can't give them an exact amount. I mean, what could you do? Not we have hundreds! Right! Oh, God. <laughs> well, here's the mail for today. That's it, huh? I will not get discouraged saying I'm going to wait until tomorrow when I can schedule it. No, issue. you're not. There's still things we can do. Like what? What do you suggest? I told you we should have planned to make more panels ourselves. Taking out advertising something. Why didn't I listen to you, damn it? Quinn, it's not his fault. It's not anybody's fault. I just thought we'd have more panels by now. Oh, That's my, all. My mistake was letting this go. No, my mistake was listening to you. I told you we should have made more panels. Where are they, Rusty? Why aren't they coming in? I knew we should have made more ourselves. Fuck. Ever since I came here, you have not... Fine. Fine. How are we going to do that? We're exhausting our volunteers as it is. I'll do it myself if I have to. We'll get more volunteers if that's what we need to do. This has got to happen. This will happen, Quinn, but I don't see how acting irrationally is going to... Why do I have to keep explaining myself? I have thought and rethought this idea for over a year. I know exactly how it should work. This is my project. I don't need you to interpret what I say. This is not your project, Quinn. I don't care what you think. Oh, that seems clear. Stop putting words in my mouth and listen. No, you listen. You guys! I will not let people find a change when I'm doing the plan as it is work. Works, we're running out of time. Work with them. Stop offending them. Offending them? This is not a daycare center. This isn't something we can sit down like a couple of gentlemen and discuss over a martini. What are you talking about? Look, we have 300 panels, maybe less. We need how many? Well, thousands. I'm not going to coddle people like this in some fucking men's club. Whatever particular hair you have up your ass, I wish you'd please let me in on it. I'm talking about the way you handle things. We need to push down this whole thing to fall apart. Quinn, there's another way to deal with people. Oh, right. Let's take Rusty, for instance. You give him the job designing the quilt. A little feedback, and he disappears for a week. How the fuck are we supposed to deal with that? Well, maybe don't yell at him. What's so damn difficult about that? You can motivate people, Quinn, but managing them is different. Let me manage them. Damn it, then manage. Do something about this. Well, let's hear it. OK. We wait till after the weekend. It'll be after Labor Day. I think four panels will come in. If for some reason they don't, then after the weekend we take major action. We use the weekend to plan. Plans? More planning? I'm not sure I agree. OK, then we'll That's wasting wait. time. We should do something now. I am prepared to stay here all night. If you ever will stay with me and just keep making panels if I have to. This is what I get for hiring a fucking MBA. Plans instead of action. Who the hell do you think I you're going to do? It? It? Oh, hi. Uh, can I help you? Hablo usted espanol. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, si. Chill. Perdiendo, señora. Pásale, por favor. Esto es para Enrique, mi hijo. This is for Enrique, my son. Él era tan lindo, esto es tan pobre. No tan lindo como los otros aquí. Ojalá que le guste. He was so beautiful, but not as beautiful as those here. Era todo lo que pudimos hacer. Tuvimos que hacer algo. It's all we could do, and we had to do something. Enrique era tan lindo de chico, y de hombre tan guapo como su padre. As a child, Enrique was beautiful, and as a man, as handsome as his father. Y muy buen bailador. He was such a good dancer too. Todos sus 
sus hermanos y hermanas ayudaron con esto. All his brothers and sisters helped me with this. Su padre escuchó todo lo que hicimos y no dijo ni una palabra. His father heard everything and did not say a word. Hacía su modo, pero quiso mucho a Enrique. That was his way. He loved Enrique so much. Mira, cuando terminamos y nos retiramos para dormir, su padre puso esa marca. See, when we were finished and had gone to bed, his father left his mark. No la vi hasta después que los estaba doblando. I did not see it until later when I went to fold it up. Escribió, me haces tanta falta, mijo. It says, a piece of me is missing, my son. ¿Ves? Era la manera de él. Quiero darte mis gracias. See, that was his way, and I wish to thank you for this. In mi corazón pensé que yo estaba sola y me sentía muy sola. In my heart I felt that I was all alone. And that was the hardest part. Because I felt that I was all by myself. Era lo más duro porque yo pensaba que estaba solita. Pero ustedes. But you people. La gente, yo siento que entienden esto. I feel you understand. Y les digo, con todo el corazón. Como nos dieron la mano a nosotros, les daremos la mano a ustedes si nos necesitan. And I tell you from the bottom of my heart, as you have given us your hands, we shall give you ours if you should need them. No matter how hard you push me, I won't go away. If I leave this project when I choose to leave, it won't be because of you. I'm going to find Rusty. I'm bringing him back.
I heard you all those times calling me names on your breath. Pause. Lucky. Hey, fag! Hey, faggot! Pansy! Whip! Queer! I am not a faggot. I have a name and I do not answer to you. I have ears and I have a heart. And I heard you all those times calling me names like it mattered. You know, something about dying has a way of uh, changing your perspective on things. Boy, are you in for a surprise? Okay, let's see if we can figure this out on paper. We've got uh, one more week to the deadline for Washington, four more weeks to the display itself. More and more titles are arriving every day, and the question isn't so much as where do we get them, it's where do we put them. What are you looking at me for? Pardon me, it's how are we possibly going to sew them together? Well, what's the count? 420 pounds. We get about five or six a day. 420? On the Capitol Mall, that's going to look like someone dropped a handkerchief. Look, why don't you just... Do we know how many more we need? Whatever you do, do not figure out how long it's going to take to sew them together, or how many pet people we'll need, or how many machines. I already know it's impossible. And if you prove me wrong, I may just have a breakdown right here on the spot. I'm warning you. Oh, he's warning us. Go ahead, roll your eyes. I hope they stick. Please, stop fighting, girls. You're both pretty. The point is, they're, they're still coming in. Right, but how many more we need? I had the figures written down somewhere. Where did I put that piece of paper? Who do I look like? Your younger brother? Find it yourself. On your desk? In which case, you're going to need a search party. Oh, where did I put that? Laney was my brother and only 36 when he died. But he'd essentially achieved all of his professional goals. But far, far more importantly than that, his illness brought him a kind of spiritual insight that wouldn't have come without this shattering reality. So much so, in fact, that when the end came, and he died in my arms, he closed his sweet brown eyes, still looking into mine. It was in some mysterious and miraculous way the most perfect moment of our lives. I have a name. I remember. I was sitting in the hospital waiting room just after being told Karen had AIDS. I mentally became very small, lifted off the sofa, went out the window, and landed on the grass. The wind blew a leaf down over me and I hid from the world for a few seconds. With God's help and Karen's courage, we dealt with her illness with all the love within us, and life goes on. I will miss her forever. How many? Too many. More than you want to know. Don't tell me I don't want to know. We'll make it. Right. God damn it, I wish we had more time. Ain't that the truth? Amen. Make no mistake about it. Even if I am gone, I'm not really gone. You haven't gotten rid of me yet. I'll be back later. I've got to get out of here. Again? Again. Go. All right. All right. I was just about ready to call it a day myself before someone comes in here and wants to sew something like the back end of a bus onto a panel. <laughs> I tell you, where people get their ideas. <laughs> Yes, yes I do. I don't know how to explain. 
explain it. There's just a lot more here at work than that which we can see. Well, later on that evening, he told me very simply that the boxes were here. Listen to me. I'm listening. The boxes. They are there. Yes. In my studio. I, I know you can't see them. That's because. Oh, that's because they're they're in a different, a, a compressed form or something. Do you believe me? Yes. They're there. One day you'll see them. Keep looking. I never did find the boxes, and they had passed away the next day. His experience, however you might want to explain, was his hope. I carry his hope along with mine. The hope for boxes filled with animals, and he was filled with serum. Where they came from doesn't matter. Hoping for them does. Excuse, but I get the feeling you're working up to one of your talks. What makes you think that? Look, if you're going to try and talk me into going back to him, you can save yourself the time. Actually, there was something I was hoping to say, but that wasn't it. It's about Chael. Is he all right? Oh, he's fine. Doing real well by himself. Breakups are always rough on everybody. How are you doing? I'll have to admit it was rough for a while, but that's past. I'm doing just fine now, and there's plenty to do. Boy, that's for sure. I made four panels this week. This one's for Willie. Someone I used to work with. Poor Willie committed suicide when he found out. Oh, my. His lover came home and found him one day after work. Just couldn't bear to live with it, I guess. Hey, with all this work, are you making sure you get time with for yourself? I don't know. I like doing these. Besides, we need more panels right now. Chris, you know, when I left my husband eight years ago, it took me the first four before I could begin to forgive myself. I just had no idea how hard I'd been on myself. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it was like everyone else could see it. It must have been the way I looked or something. I kept going around and saying, I'm just fine. Then one day a friend took me aside and said, Judy, dear, I would certainly hope you're as fine as you say you are. But if you are, you should have your heart and form your face. Judy, I told you I'm fine, and I really am concerned for Cheo. It's just, I just couldn't stay there, that's all. I would have left even if he hadn't gotten sick. It's not what you're thinking. Fine, but I'm not here to talk about ex-lovers or your decision to leave. It's your choice. I came to talk about you. There's nothing to talk about, so let's just drop it, okay? Look, I got something to this book. When I read it, I thought of you and I thought of... Boy, you really think you have all the answers, don't you? Just what we need right now. Right. Wandering around thinking you've got some way out of this because you're in touch with your feelings. More of your liberal bleeding heart bullshit. I don't buy it. You think I'm happy having to do what I did? You think I looked for the opportunity to hurt someone I love? What kind of a person do you think I am? Give me some of your answers, Judy. I don't have answers. You see, that's what you people always do. No matter what I say, you always have the perfect response. You can't even allow yourself to get mad at me. So please just take your feelings, your woo-woo, shake it the fuck out of here. Now look! Do you hear what I said? I know you're trying to help, but what happened to you and what has happened to me are not the same thing. <clears throat> when you left your husband, he wasn't going to die. Someone has stolen the future from me. It hurts to think about it. My mind just won't stop. I lie in bed in the mornings and I force myself to stay asleep for as long as possible. Because I live with the feeling that I may never again feel safe. For the rest of my life, I will always think that something could happen to me. I mean, just how will I know when I've survived this? So I left him. I had to. My God, somewhere in the world there's got to be a place where someone isn't dying. Well, what are you doing here then? I don't know. That isn't that the truth. I don't know. Finishing some business, I guess. I'm not a bad person, Judy. I'm not. I'm just not... Strong, like you. Oh, Lord. What? If only you knew. Hey! Hey, can you see me? You can? Wow. Not everybody can see me, because I'm special. Only
only I wasn't always. I was just a little boy, but then I found out I was special. You know how come I know? Because one day I went to school and nobody would play with me. Nobody came near me. But I figured it out. I did. The teachers wouldn't let him. Because I'm really Superman! And they're the kryptonite, and that's what kills Superman. Don't you know anything? That's what happened. Finally, they made me leave my school. It was okay, I guess, because I was getting so tired all the time. But that's how I found out I wasn't a real little boy. Really. I was really Superman. Some kryptonite must have gotten near me or something, because I got killed. But I'm still Superman! I'm gonna get you, my Luthor! I am.
come on, Mother. I'm sure she doesn't want to be hearing about that. She's got a lot of work to do. Say, you got a hole in your roof right up over here. For rage, you could be in big trouble. You ought to see about getting that fixed. I looked right up and saw this guy looking right back. Oh, yeah, what well, do you know? You know, I think there might be one way back there in the corner. Oh, yeah? Yeah. My sister might go and Make the panel. Like the bird who was right there with us. We all remember her. We cried. I'm almost embarrassed to admit it, but we laughed. Couldn't help it. Remembering all the funny things made us laugh so much. Things we never thought about in, well, forever. We never talked like that. We never been family like that. Who would have thought? Yep. A few rolls of tar paper, a couple hours of work, uh, should cost no more than fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. You see to it now. Oh, all right. Well, we gotta be going now. We got some, some people we gotta go meet and all. In a minute, Daddy. You know, Miss, I don't know how to thank you. Not at all. What do you say, honey, to a little drink? I know there's a couple bars right here in the neighborhood. I don't think you'd want Oh, there are. You should have a real nice time. Merle, <laughs> Roberta Sue would say to this up. They gave it to us, but we really think you should have it. We thought it wasn't right, we should keep it. Thank you. Thank you both very much. There's your rope. Isn't this just so much more fun than just sitting at home? Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, when you, when you, and you. Well, that look, I know that look, I do. I went around with that look on my face for days, for weeks. It gets better, though, trust me. Listen, I had two roommates die within three years of each other. Yeah. Don't cry for me, San Francisco. I know what you're feeling. My entire life was, go was blown away like Dorothy's little house in Kansas. Only I didn't land in Oz, or anywhere magically turned to color. There I am in this huge old house, still in black and white, with nothing to do. So I clean you. Three times, top to bottom. Then I cried. Then I gave a little touch up to my face and mopped and scoured some more. I made Mary Tyler Moore look like Pigpen. There I am, like Norman Bates' mother, all alone in this huge old house. Could have talked to myself in voices. It would have helped. I wouldn't hurt a fly. Hasn't anyone seen Psycho? You people should get out more. <laughs> no, really, I knew I couldn't live like that. I felt like I was the only one who'd ever been through this. Like there was this huge shadow over me, over everything. I remember, think I remember thinking, all I want to do is go to Sunday brunch and wear sandals. Instead, I came here. It was terrifying. So many of us are such close friends. I hardly knew these people four months ago. I hardly know where they live. I've never been in their homes. I mean, they could have clear plastic carpet runners and lava lamps for all I know. <laughs> but we're close. I swear, coming here, it saved my life. Sometimes a picture. The picture's the hardest to look at. It breaks your heart. When I was alive, I yearned for beauty in the way that only the truly unbeautiful can. Not that I was ugly. I was sort of on the edge of plain. Not very good looking, and certainly nothing to turn heads on Sunday at a beach. Wouldn't you agree? Well... I worried. I yearned for beauty, and still it did not come. Forever shut out of the pretty boys' parties. How I thought I missed him. How I pretended I did not. He looks like he'd be a lot of fun, though. Wouldn't you know this would happen to me now? Wouldn't you know I'd be handsome now? I don't know how to deal with this. 
I never once felt handsome, and now I see that I really was. It's a matter of perspective, I guess. I never let myself believe it, and I finally became what I refused to believe. I move among angels now. Singing and singing and dancing sometimes. When I hear Mozart's mass in C minor, when I see Baryshnikov dance in Nutcracker, when I watch Peter O'Toole and Lawrence Beret again, and with Leonardo again. I dance among angels forever and gracefully. Angels who come home to dance. I like to think that a little of that dancing lives on in this world. He always used to say, Relax and let the magic happen. Well, as if that would make everything all right somehow. So what do you want from me, huh? You worry too much. Brady was in the service. He was away from home a lot. Even so, he was a good father to our three kids and a wonderful husband to me. Why do you have to know everything? Some things are just my business. I never knew what he did when he was away. It didn't matter. I loved him. I accepted it. Don't worry. I can take care of myself. There's nothing for you to worry about. We had an unconventional marriage. That's true. I loved that about him. And because of that, I was loved by a part of Brady nobody else ever saw. No matter what, he was faithful to me. After what I've been through, you'd think this would be the last place to be. Only, what's there to be afraid of when you're in the middle of what you most fear? I mean, what can happen to me now? This is my way of reminding myself of what I can lose tomorrow or any day in the future. It's the hardest work I've ever done, but somehow I feel, well, I feel like Mitzi Gaynor at the end of, well, at the end of every of her movies. I'm just so happy. <laughs> During the 1950s, he served as right-hand man to Senator Joseph McCarthy's communist and anti-gay witch hunts. Khan's vicious tactics and innuendo ruined hundreds of lives and drove, and drove who knows how many to desperation and suicide. Always in the public eye, allegations of his homosexuality were completely refuted. He claimed his illness to be a liver disease. His medical and hospital records indicated AIDS. Many people would argue that a shallow grave and a handful of lime would be a fitting tribute to the legacy of Roy Kahn. Living, living a closeted life is one thing, but ruining other lives with a zeal that can only be described as sadistic is unforgivable. But Roy Kahn died of AIDS. And whether you liked him or hated him, the fact remains that Roy Kahn died of AIDS. He was ashamed to be gay. He was a bully, yes. A coward, yes. He was also a victim of this horrible disease. I'd like to thank you all who so graciously responded to our need for more panels. I have here a little report which I have prepared. But first, I'd like to publicly thank Gwen's grandmother for the lovely donation of this attractive quilting, the cleaning apron, which has become a staple of my quilting ensemble. <laughs> Pockets and everything! <laughs> Lord, get on with it. <clears throat> and now for my report. Of the 2,000 panels we said we needed in order to finish our quilt, we now have, with three weeks to go, right here in this workshop, in our very hands, exactly 700. I knew it! I knew it! I knew this would happen! God damn it! What? I told you! Don't start with me! Will you please? What's going Don't on? Don't start! I told you! Didn't I tell you? Tell me why! Do I need this? I only have ten hands. Ten hands, that's funny. Mother of God, I'll put everything else I have to listen to him. 
Yeah. Oh, Will you listen to me? Oh, don't listen to me. Well, I told you. Tell listen me what to I me. Why does anyone ever listen to me? Carrying on and screaming? I listen. Christ, bunch of dysfunctionals. Why should you listen to me? I'm just a straight one. You're just as crazy as he is. Who is? Why does everyone ignore every fucking word I say? Fine, don't tell me. We were crazy to start this in the first place, so the way I figured it, what is so fucking new? Tell me. Nobody ever listens to me, so what's new? Oh, join the club. Oh, I'm tired of listening to this. This is getting new. I'm losing my mind. Don't worry, you don't need one around here. What are you talking about? I don't even want to hear it. What are all of you talking about? That's his problem. He never wants to hear Look, it. Look, we have a real problem here. Oh, just figuring that out. That's federal. Where do you want to start? I'll oh, get it. No problem. See, that's the problem. You see? Talk, talk, talk. We got work to do. I, I want to talk about this. Oh, please. We should have done it my way, like I told you. Your way? We can't afford your way. Put it on a postcard. No, I I'm busy. busy. But no. Well, don't longer than I should. I should have been gone two months ago, they said, but hey, I've never been on time for anything in my life. Oh, oh this. This is my pen. I, I figure, why wait? You know, it gives me something to do, and I'm grateful for that. I guess you can tell that I'm not very well. Can't hide that, I suppose. Finally given up wanting to. But you know something? My life is very rich. I almost don't want to bring that up. People get so upset when I say that. It keeps me just looking on the bright side because I can't handle the pain. Now that's a good one. But I keep bringing it up. Pisses them off. Feel like it to me. 
I sewed six stitches to the inch like you're supposed to do on a quilt. My sister taught me that. God bless her. She used to be such a bitch. <laughs> Always mad at me for some reason or another. Well, one day right in the middle of one of her weekly sermons, they said, Honey, <coughs> carry on. Go for it. If you're going to be a bitch, you might as well enjoy it. It ain't going to last forever. That shut her up. <laughs> You see this? It's the ocean. I love the ocean. Whenever my soul felt about this big, I'd go there and suddenly I was immense again. For some reason, when you're sitting on a beach, anything seems possible. Why is that? Well, I can't go to the ocean anymore, but I can imagine it while I sit and sew. I want you to do something for me. I want you to go out to the ocean at the next possible sunset, my friend. And thank God for the legs you have to get there. And be thankful and sing and dance and scream. Scream bloody joy.
nobody killed him. I know how it feels. It might have been better if somebody had killed him. At least she can kill back. Remember. God damn it, remember. All this bullshit is not what Al was about. You have to force yourself to remember him. It hurts like hell, but it's the only way it's going to get any better. Draw his name. You can handle it. You can. Remember all the times you laughed with him. All the time she gave of yourself, and it was all you ever wanted. Remember how he drive you crazy, or made you jealous, or even how you felt sorry for yourself. Let it come back. And remember to cry for yourself, too. For what has happened to so much love. This pain has finally reached you, too, and now you know it ain't nothing you can outrun. Hmm, you and I, we live in different worlds, and they ain't coming together like we thought. The only thing I definitely know we do share is this pain. It's a bridge. And together we can cross it and realize that we're the same. Sleep well in my arms tonight, my love. I'll dream of you, dreaming of me, never forgetting. No thoughts, no more moments, since no one for me will be you. Well, Marvin, a lot has happened since we last talked. So what fills my life now? A room full of fabric and the funny feeling that this clock can talk. I used to do all the talking. Remember my speeches? We are survivors. We will survive again, and we shall be the strongest and most gentle people on this earth. Remember when I said that? You love my words, you said. Well, look who's doing the talking now. These simple pieces of cloth have such loud things to say. This is how I remember you, Marvin. Not in stone. In something that lives. I put the memories of you back together, only to discover that it hurts just as much. But I have comfort now. I cover myself with this cloth, and I am not alone. Can I let you in on a secret? I didn't plan all this. I wanted a banner for revolution. I wanted people to listen. I didn't get to say a word. Fuck. Well, what do you know? Something else worked. Have we confirmed what time they're going to pick up the quilt? Already confirmed. We can go home now if you want. Soon. And you picked up the tickets for Washington. Yep. I guess this is it. And you made sure we had extra volunteers in case some don't show up. Lord, yes, yes, yes. You don't stop, do you? Never. It's my trademark. It's time. I send this panel out into the world with my deepest love and thanks. <coughs> my hand. 
times of song what my heart remembers. Take it and add it to the thousands of others, the work our memories bless. We will never, never forget that we have cried. It is time, time to move on. And the memories of you come rushing back to me. You get wonderful dinner party. You were concerned for me. You were so funny, so clever. You gave me the chance to grow and want to survive. Uh, I did it. It's not exactly artistic, and I certainly can't sew. Uh, I found myself having to rely on others to do all the sewing and the hemming and whatever. Working on it was hard. It opened up some wounds that were just beginning to heal. Emblazoned across the panel, in maritime penance, is the one message I would like to signal to eternity. I choose you again. You gave yourself to others. Played in the band, sang in the chorus. You were committed to the education of people. You were concerned for people outside yourself. You were a neurotic mess, honey, but I loved you anyway. I will even miss the outrageous phone bills that let me know someone out there loved me. He was more than a friend. He was a miracle. We were supposed to grow old together. Two old queens dripping in diamonds and gold. He thin, I fat. That's the way the script was supposed to have been written. The life has killed the dream I dream. One day all of this shall cease. Here's to you, here's to me, and here's to Frank. He was a bothead's pothead till the end. Oh, that we could all be gay again. Please. For just a drink. A dance. A kiss. Miss Another memory. Fool. Matthew taught me two things. To juggle oranges and to keep my hands off my hips. My boys. Where have you all gone? Doesn't it seem like all the good ones are gone? And all the shits are left? <laughs> Look for me in the people I've known and loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies. And by letting go of the children inside. We need to be free. Love doesn't die. People do. So when all that's left of me is love. Give, give me away. Way. Way. Not every life ends neatly. Not every poem rhymes. To all of you, our absent friends. Vital. Courageous. Committed. Generous. We go beyond the veil of fear, lighting each other's way. Across the bridge between the known and unknown. What have we lost? What have we done? I don't miss Woody, because he never really left us. He came to me on the night of June 12th, naked, radiant, smiling impishly, and filling me with gold light. I sat up. I was stunned. He said to me, fooled you, thought I was dead, didn't you? I replied, I suppose this means I have to give you back your stud t-shirt. <laughs> I don't think that somewhere in another reality I'll have to meet you. There's a party going on for those fine, beautiful young men. I know that from their side of the universe, while all this is happening, they are watching out for us. A thousand memories explode into a rainbow, bridging heaven and earth. Distance is an illusion. You are not forgotten. I remember when he first came out. He was so upset when he came to tell me. I already knew. When your brother goes through high school without a date, you kind of get this feeling, you know? <laughs> Gary was my brother. My children grew up in a small town where the idea of homosexuality might never be accepted. But they grew up knowing and loving their Uncle Gary. And because of that love, they know more than I could ever teach them about the stupidities of prejudice. We met in Latin class. He was passionate about the language, and I could have cared less. I just stayed through four years because he was there. One day, as we translated Virgil, we came across a passage honoring a young man who had died in battle. He was moved to tears. 
It is there on this panel. Dante might have still be a play in Gilt Lilies from Full Hand. hard to finish, to place the last brush stroke, to give the thing away. But when I hung it up to dry, I turned back to look at it and I felt a marvelous sense of jubilation. We did it, I said to him. We did it and it's big and it can't be denied and it's not a statistic. Jacoby, Ted Alexander, Harvey George, Al, Peter Deer, Rodney Jewell, Bobby Anderson, Paul Gibson, David and Carrie, Ed Dank, Jim Johnson, Norman Armentrout, Dennis Glass, Jim and I Jim. Dennis Dew, Warren Johnson, David Arand, Roy Cole, John Justin Peter Tom, Lyle Dobson, Ray Jones, Michael Babcock, John Gosen, Nancy and Bosco, Richard Donovan, David Keener, Michael Baker, Dan Greenberg, Ramona, Joe Dubois, Michael King, Art Barra, Ray Greenwood, Frederick Abrams, Bob E, Harley Knight, Tom Bauer, Milton Greer, David Eichen. John Elliott, David Lathrop, John Beaker, Roy Hall, Serafin Fernandez Alvarez, Dale Enger, Phil Lopez, Phil Benefield, Curtis Hancock, 
Walter Applebaum. Paul Etzfold. Dennis Long. Frank Bernabai. Walter and Mark Hansen. Jack Ashton. James Famolaro. Michael Lowry. Tom Biscotto. Michael Harriman. Jimmy B. Larry Fernandez. Chuck Lynch. Jim Blanchard. Jimmy Ray Harrison. David Bailey. Stephen Fields. Tommy M. Phil Bond. Bob Hopkins. Stuart Barkow. Bob Fisk. Andy C. Marks. Justin Bostwick. Thomas L. J.D. Bastin. David P. Flynn. Lester Martin. Jim Braden. Aram Hernandez. Washington Bellamy, Jr. Patrick Fortune. Mark Mason. Charlie Braun. David.